Hello everyone, welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Karen here with an Orlando Prophecy Summit update. It is just around the corner happening February 29th through March 3rd, and we would like to invite you to join us via streaming. We have an on-demand option where you will be able to have access to every single presentation happening over the weekend as it happens, and you will have access to those presentations for six months after the, the conference is over. So you'll be able to go back, watch, rewatch the content as many times as you need to from the comfort of your own home, which is an amazing opportunity. If you'd like to sign up, you can go to prophecywatchers.com and scroll down to the on-demand banner, and you can sign up that way. And I am doing uh, just some teaser conversations with some of the speakers who are going to be giving presentations over the uh, weekend. And I have the privilege of speaking with L.A. Marzulli today. L.A., thank you for being with us. My honor and pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, we are thrilled that you're going to be joining us in Orlando, and you're going to be giving two uh, conference messages, and they are, of course, some of the most anticipated messages of the weekend. You are a fan favorite for sure. But the first one that you are going to be talking on is Days of Chaos, which you know, nothing about this world describes days of chaos right now. So I really don't know what you're going to be doing with this message, but kind of give us a sneak peek about what this talks, what this topic is. I will. This book was written in 2015 and a friend of mine, um, uh, Ted Haley actually wrote me a, a couple of months ago and said, LA, this book is prophetic. My gosh, everything that you wrote in 2015 is coming about. And so chapter one, earthquakes in diverse places. Two, wars and rumors of wars. Three, troublesome times. Four, one world government. Six, false Christ. Eight, lawlessness. Um, signs in the heavens, marrying apparitions, you know, volcanic activity. The rise of anti-Semitism. I mean, it's just, I, I, I kind of looked at, looked at this because I haven't read it since basically it, it came out. I mean, I don't really reread books that I've written. Right. So it's it's you know it's it's almost ten years old, and it just blew me away. And so I'm doing an up. I did this presentation at Prophecy Watchers years ago, probably 2016, 2017, something like that. So I'm doing an updated version of it, and because it's it's extremely apropos everything that we're seeing, and it's on steroids. I mean, when I wrote this. In 2015, I was alarmed. Now, and here we are in 2024, and, you know, I mean, I could get into the whole, the possibility of Ezekiel 38, underlying possibility. We don't know, but it's certainly a very strong possibility. And as you as you know, Karen, we were supposed to head over to Israel the day of the war. Right. And at the last second, the thing gets called off, and it was just like, you, you know, you've got to be kidding me. And and one of those chapters, the rise of anti-Semitism, you know, immediately the all these anti-Semites just just come out of the woodwork. It's 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 mind-boggling to what we see. And then you see on college campuses, you know, from the river to the sea to the sea, Palestine will be free. Some of these people have no idea of the history of the Middle East, the Balfour Declaration, that the Jews inhabited the land, that it was a wasteland. You go back 150 years ago and look at pictures, it's denuded. There's not a tree there. It's a wasteland. It doesn't rain. The latter rain had ceased to ceased to, to fall for almost 2,000 years. But I digress. So Days of Chaos um, will be sort of a hard-hitting expose on where we're at. Very staccato-like with the Marian apparitions, what what the other side of the aisle, obviously the whole UFO phenomena. But I mean, we are we are in it up to our eyeballs at this point. And look, cool heads could prevail, everything could turn around. But you know, I, I talked about volcanic activity in the book. And now <laughs> Iceland and, and God help us if the Ayafala Hokel decides to go. Yeah. That's one of the biggest volcanoes. That if that thing goes, that can shut the airspace over Northern Europe for like weeks, if it goes. So there's, there's a lot looking at. Now, I know you did a lot of discussion, a lot of research on the Marian apparitions, mm -hmm. but you haven't really touched on them as much. And I know that they could kind of be connected with the UFOs a little bit. Is there a lot of activity going on with that? Like kind of what are you noticing the trends on, on that right now? There is a video on on uh, the Super Bowl yesterday. Someone sent me the link. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. Um, I have to catch up on the halftime show. That's 
that's what I really focus on. So I will look at the half. I'm supposed to go on vacation. So, but anyway, so, but I will look at the halftime show in the next 24 hours and I'm not going to comment on it because I'm going on vacation, right. but there was, there was this ad uh, and it was, it's like, what? I mean, ads at the Super Bowl cost a lot of money, you know, and this thing was like a full minute ad and it had all these extraterrestrials, UFOs flying everywhere, trying to get everybody's attention and they weren't getting anybody's attention at all. And you can see that then it cuts up to the ship and one of the aliens is like holding his head. By the way, the alien looked exactly like this in the commercial. Mm. Exactly like that in the commercial. Interesting. Yeah, thanks Jim Peters for giving me this coin. It's on my desk, but I digress once again. So finally at the very end, they get everybody's attention and everybody's looking up. Well, you know, (laughs) this is what just amazes me. Not so much the Marian apparition stuff. There's there's not a lot of new ones that I'm aware of. There hasn't been one in a while. She's still allegedly communicating to the children at Medjugorje. Now, I don't buy that for a minute. In my opinion, with all due respect to Catholics, believe what you want to believe, but this is not Mary of the Bible. It just isn't. Right. This imposter. And I, and I realize that a lot of people immediately thinks that I'm will think that I'm um, bashing Catholics. I'm not. People have the right to believe what they want to believe. I get that. But I also have a right to go, wait a minute, guys. How do you know it's Mary of the Bible? Has anybody ever tested the spirits? And and Mary was not, you know, the whole assumption is just created 400 years after the after the fact. She disappears from the book of Acts. So what are we really looking at here? Do I respect her as the God bearer? Absolutely. You know, blessed you amongst all women. Okay, I get that. But to say that she's appearing, and and a lot of these things she has, she's always holding the baby Jesus. Well, the Jesus, that's blasphemous in my opinion. Jesus is not a baby. He bears the wounds of the crucifixion. He's the risen Savior. His eyes are like blazing fire. On his head are many crowns. That's the Jesus that we will see when he comes riding back. So um, on one hand, the Marian apparition stuff has sort of calmed down a bit. On the other hand, the whole UFO phenomena is just going through the roof, real burgeoning and not going away. Yeah. Well, in that vein, um, I, it's interesting that you mentioned the Super Bowl commercials. I feel like that is a perfect opportunity to kind of see where our culture is headed, just like mm-hmm. going to the movies. That's really where the, the direction of our country is going, the direction of our culture. That's how they kind of start to get ideas going and, and get people mm-hmm. start to talk. So um, the fact that that was a commercial, I'm not at all surprised that that, that was... Um, that that played over the Super Bowl. But um, you are also talking on Roswell Revisited over the conference weekend. So yeah, the beautiful new cover. Tell us about that. You know, we went out, um, we went up to Montana and we interviewed Dr. Jesse Marcel Jr.'s widow. And then we interviewed um, one of his best friends who actually runs <clears throat> the Jesse Marcel Jr. Museum up there. And then back down here in Southern California, we interviewed his daughter. Um, and so there's also an interview that I did with Jesse Marcel Jr. right before he passed away. So this is real investigative journalism. It's investigative reporting. The, the, the Roswell Revisited, the first one, is called Exoneration. And the reason why we name it that, my, when I say we, my business partner, Gil Zimmerman, who basically it's really fantastic having him come alongside um, with all the editing and the production and, and everything in these films now. Gil, Gil Zimmerman worked 30 years at DreamWorks and Disney, so he's like – you know, what's he what's he doing with me? I mean, that's the first thing. Right. But, um, you know, I think we've we raised the bar on some of the films. So, you know, we took the film crew up to Montana and we, and we um, did very extensive interviews with um, with the people I just mentioned talking about Roswell. And of course, we have Jesse Marcel Jr.'s interview before he passed away. We also have an interview with Marcel Sr., who talks about what happened at Roswell. And and this is the deal. This is July 8th from the Roswell Daily Record. This is a replica of it. Wow. And this is this is the truth. Tim Alberino and I talked about this. Tim also appears in the film. So they did literally capture a flying saucer. There's no doubt about it. And then the day later, they rolled with this. General Ramey says excitement not justified. And this is where the whole weather balloon story begins to take shape. 
Um, and this has stayed with us for 77 years this July. I mean, it's just unbelievable to where um, to what the cover up was. Interestingly enough, and I will be showing part of this video, uh, there was a gentleman at a conference just recently, a couple of weekends ago, that wanted to get together with me. Well, his grandmother lived and worked at the Roswell Army Base for decades before wow. she retired. She was there in 47. So now she's old. This is a couple of months before she passes away. So this gentleman is driving his grandmother around Roswell. And they're getting near Hangar 84. And I'll talk about Hangar 84 in a second. They're getting near Hangar 84. And jokingly, he says to his grandmother, hey, isn't this the hangar where they took the dead bodies from, from the crash? Without missing a beat, the woman, the grandmother goes, yes, exactly. This is 1947. Wow. This is where they stored the bodies. They wouldn't let us in there. And he does a double take and goes, what? Wow. And so it's like another, it's another smoking gun. It's another deathbed confession. So we got into Hangar 84. We show this in the film. The second film is Roswell Revisited in the debris field. So we're, and I was, we were on the outskirts of, Hangar 84 is surrounded by a chain link fence. You can't get in there. And there was a guy on the other side of a chain link fence who worked at Hangar 84 smoking a cigarette. So I go running up to him because I've learned over the years, you've got to press the envelope. And I go, hey, look, we're a really small film company from Southern California. Can we come in and, and check this out? Can we come in the hangar? Yeah, well, come up to the front. I'll get Bo on the phone. He's the uh, overseer of the whole base, and we can talk from there. So now we're in the ante room wow. of Hangar 84. I can't wow. Even, That's yeah, I can't even believe it. <laughs> and I'm on the phone with Bo, and I'm going, yeah, we just would love to come in. He goes, yeah, I'll be down in about 20 minutes. So... 20 minutes later, Bull comes in, it's all on film, and now we're in the conference room at Hangar 84. Wow. And we're asking him questions, and then I go, well, can we go into the hangar? Yeah, come on, follow me. And th there I am, I'm standing in Hangar 84, the iconic hangar. And there's also a deathbed confession, an affidavit by uh, Walter G. Hott, who, it was a sealed affidavit at the time of his death, he said he was in Hangar 84. That's where the saucer was kept, the pieces of it, the wreckage, and the bodies. So we've got multiple witnesses on the films, um, either in the in the film, on the film, written affidavits, and then this new one that all talks about Hangar 84 was the place where they took the bodies. So I'm not making this up. And then we went out to the debris field, and this is in the middle of nowhere. And we had two metal detectors with us. And I know this sounds unbelievable, but and I'll show it. I showed it a little bit at the last conference, but sort of teased the audience with it. But this time we'll do a deep dive because we've tested the metal. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell you what we discovered. Oh. But we, we found two pieces of the wreckage. And how do I know? Oh, there's the balloons. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> we found two pieces of the wreckage and we tested the metal. And let me see if I can get the stars. Here I go. <laughs> Thank you. Bravo, bravo. Bravo. So we tested the metal, and all this will be revealed uh, at the conference. So you're really going to want to check out the live streaming. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, your presentations are always, like, Thank they're you. they're always packed. They're always just jaw-on-the-floor presentations. Everybody loves them. You do an incredible presentation. Thank the you, energy is electric, and the information that you bring, whether you're watching it on, on uh, streaming or whether you're in person, it's information that is going to shift your worldview. It's going to be information that you're going to want to know ahead of time what's going on because it's how the enemy is trying to to you know get his angle in get his story and so we need to like all your presentations the move the counter move if we have that information beforehand then we know when when it's news headlines what to believe and and why it's happening the way it's happening so i'm so glad that you are um, giving us that information ahead of time and that you're doing all this research and i love that the lord is opening those doors for you getting you into these specific places like i know that he is just thrilled at, at getting to do this for you because you're you're so giddy about it and you're just so enthralled <laughs> with what he's doing so 
Um, I think that's beautiful. And we are out of time, but I wanted to give you the opportunity if there's anything that you wanted to say or let us know you've given us a really good preview, but is there anything that you didn't get to touch on? The only thing is, is that the Lord is directing our steps. There's no doubt about it. And all the glory goes to him. I mean, uh, the way he opened, like he just said, the way he opens the doors and allows us to go in, <clears throat> excuse me, go in and film. And we found two pieces of the wreckage in the debris field. I mean, it's he's he's directing our steps. There's no doubt about it. But uh, I just look forward to meeting all the folks. And it's the gathering of our tribe. And um, just can't wait to see everybody in Orlando. And it's an honor for to be even invited. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, we always love having you. And we are looking forward to seeing you at the end of the month. Thank you all for joining us. We will see you here, there, or in the air.